I was being transported from a secret location to testify against the Mexican Mafia Godfather. Not only was I labeled a rat for turning on my brothers, I was to be executed by any Southern gang member that had the opportunity. The same Sudanios I once held dominion over. Mundo, you ready for this? Testifying against Joe is a big deal. At this point, it is what it is. Let's go. Let's go then. Mundo, why don't you take a seat? We have to keep you gaffled up for the benefit of Joe's attorney. Have a seat. Okay, Mundo. I'm the district attorney in charge of prosecuting the Joe Morgan case. And before the defense attorney gets here, I wanted to ask you a couple of questions. Are you okay with that? Yeah. Yeah. Before I ask those questions, there's something that's really baffling me. Why would a hardcore Mexican Mafia member, such as yourself, roll on one of his brothers? I made a vow to God that I would do anything to stop the darkness. Okay, so why don't you tell me about Joe Morgan? What kind of guy was he? Joe. He's one of the most charismatic, witty, and outgoing person I've ever met. And at the same time, he can be the most evil, deadly, and calculated killer. I know, because I was the same way. Okay, so you say that you were the same way, calculated killer. Did you and Joe ever discuss killing a prosecutor or any law enforcement officers? That hey, man doesn't target cops, DAs, or law enforcement. It's bad for business and generates too much heat. We also don't attack innocent people, women, children, the elderly. Only cowards do that. And if there's one thing that him is not, it's cowards. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mendoza. As you probably know, I'm representing Mr. Joe Morgan. Do you believe that my client has placed you in this so-called hit list? I know he has. Okay. Are you concerned, or have you heard anything about your family being placed on this phantom list? Mr. Mendoza. Mr. Mendoza, answer the question. So, how did I go from a highly respected member of the Mexican Mafia to an undercover informant? Like all of us, my journey began before I was born. To understand my culture, mi raza, one must first understand our history. After the great battles of the Mexican-American War, the Guadalupe-Hidalgo Treaty was signed in 1848. The United States acquired territory in Texas, Arizona, New Mexico, Colorado, Utah, Nevada, and California. 200,000 Mexicans became American citizens overnight, de volada. But the struggle for acceptance continued. In the early 1900s, Pancho Villa emerged a hero to some and a villain to others, but a warrior to all. In the 1920s, 
Millions of Mexicans crossed the Rio Grande searching for a better life, including my parents. Gangs also migrated north to El Paso, where the Pachuco was born. Many continued to Los Angeles and other cities where the first gangs in the Southwest were formed. World War II displayed the bravery of Mexican-Americans across the globe. At about the same time, Pachucos began wearing zoot suits in attempts to differentiate themselves. I was born in 1949, ushering in the decade in which 3,800 Mexican-Americans were forced from their homes in Chavez Ravine to build Dodger Stadium. Most left peacefully, accepting the decision of eminent domain. But a few refused to leave and were arrested and dragged from their porches while bulldozers immediately flattened their homes. The 1950s also brought a new gang, a gang of elites, a gang that only accepted the most vicious of all gang members. Huero Buff Flores from Hawaiian Gardens launched his idea at Duell Vocation Institute, and it was born a gang where all members are equal and have equal say, a gang that will have supremacy over all other gangs, the Mexican Mafia, La M. This is where my story begins. In 1959, my dad took me to my very first baseball game where I saw the great Willie Mays. After the game, we stopped by my Tio Mundo's house. He loved to tell stories about fighting alongside the legendary Pancho Villa. I wish that day would have never ended. And then they hit us from everywhere. Mexican Federales? No, Apache Indians. We fought bandidos. We fought Federales. We even fought the American troops when they came looking for Villa. But the best the Apache, Pancho Villa, he ran out of bullets. I only had a few left. The Apache, who were still alive, they rode away. On that day, we killed 35, and we lost two Dorados. I, I wish I could go back to those days. My father had a mean streak when tequila quenched his thirst. Look at me! Usually my mother suffered his wrath, but sometimes it was us, his children. Stop! Don't do that to him! Shut up! He's only a boy! Get me another bottle! The drinking is getting out of hand. It was empowering the first time I challenged my father's authority. The man I both loved and hated was withering was truly magnificent and one of the most painful images of my life. That's it! I can't take this no more! You're not gonna hurt us no more! I'm done! Get out! Just get out! What I let? Listen up, homeboys. Today is the day. These are the barrio rules. No kicking, no weapons. Tutti, give me the ring. Damn. Ramon, your keys, your wallet, whatever you don't want to lose. You ready? Cut. <laughs> Welcome to Barrio Nuevo. Mundo. What's up? Come here, see. Check this bottle out. I know that look. 
I see pain in your eyes, youngster. You don't know me, Vato. Yeah, but I know the one who knows pain and suffering. He took on all the pain and all the suffering of everybody in the world. I'm gonna tell you right now, he can take that pain away. And what he requires of you to do is to repent of your sins and put trust in him so he can take that pain away. And you'll know somewhat of joy, great joy at first. Yeah, let's get away from this Hey, crazy. listen, Isaiah 53, he understands pain. The street preacher was getting to me. Luckily, my homeboy pulled me away. Visiting a friend in White Fence territory was a fatal mistake. Their mistake was letting me live. Hey Mundo, what happened, homie? Who did this? White Fence. We were more than ready to roll. The machete made me feel like an Aztec warrior awaiting battle. I could already taste the blood that satiated my hunger for revenge. Mundo, this is for white fence when they come looking for us. Why wait? I went hunting that night and earned the nickname Machine Gun Mundo. Orale, pass the talk, brother. <laughs> Crazy Mundo. It's all over LA how you took that bottle's head off. Hey, they kicked it out. We just finished the job. Tony the war hero. What's up, man? So what war? You fighting. Oh yeah? Take me to Vietnam. Got a nine? I bleed red, white, and blue just like you. student and altar boy to a street thug adopting the swagger necessary for respect and acceptance. My life would never be the same. In many ways, I was a product of the 60s. The assassination of John Kennedy, his brother Robert, and Martin Luther King shook the nation. The Vietnam War divided America, and the psychopathic cult leader Charles Manson and his followers ripped away our country's last fabric of innocence when they mutilated unborn children. I guess it was fitting I was that close to evil. Hey, check it out, Mundo. It's that bottle of Charles Manson. It's that punk that killed Sharon Tate. You walk it, Blue. Mr. Mendoza, I'm Lieutenant Duncan, and I've been assigned by the warden to find an institution that suits you. But first, congratulations, you passed a high school equivalency of 96%. If you stay out of trouble, you may be able to go to college someday. However, I'm very concerned about you. You need help, young man. Oh yeah? 
You know who needs help? Your mother. And I'm just the guy to help you. I know you, Stevenson Jr. High, right? Bugsy? Where are you from, Messe? Mundo, Barrio Nuevo. Bugsy, King Cobras. All right, all right. Hey, so check this out, brother. As I was going the other vatos on the movida on the inside, you see those dudes over there? The negros hang with their kind, the white dudes stick with their people, and the Chicanos, we stick with our own raza. ¿Y entiendes? Where's Dad? He had to work, mijo. This came for you. Thank God you're in jail, not in Vietnam. At least this way you're alive. The real warriors were fighting in Vietnam. It hit me hard when I realized I could not be standing with them serving my country. It was too late. Okay, our next case is Ramon Mendoza, also known as Mundo. He's a violent young man with an IQ in the 140s. Sometimes the smart ones just don't know how to use their intellect. Go. Mr. Mendoza, I understand that your nickname is Machine Gun Mundo. Just something they call me on the streets, and it's stuck. You've been in four fights. All of them appear to be racially motivated. I have a special request. Go ahead, the floor is yours. I'd like to be transferred to San Quentin. My misguided pride bought me a ticket on the Grey Goose, headed to the big house at San Quentin. I got what I wanted, the opportunity to perform like the legends I'd heard so much about. Men like Big Pancho, who fought off a cell extraction for 10 minutes. Pancho and the Union Sergeant shook hands the next day, both conceding it was all in a day's work. Colorado stepped over the mortally wounded peg leg Joe Morgan from Port Maravilla, who was one of the best handball players in the prison system despite a prosthetic leg. Acha was the best chess player in the system. He also stabbed an inmate to death at the Folsom Prison Chapel while the choir sang Rock of Ages. David O.C. continued his attack on a BGF member despite being warned and then shot by a guard. Cheyenne from Bakersville, a highly respected killer, attempted to unite all Mexican gangs, including the rival prison gang, Nuestra Familia. My name is Sergeant Smith. You have been assigned to San Quentin because you have been convicted of a crime. It is not my job to display my personal feelings with regard to the nature of your crime. It is my job to enforce the rules of this prison, and it is your job to follow them. You will be treated with respect, and I expect each of you to treat my officers with respect. Good luck, man. The loneliness and despair are routine, but the worst is the pure monotony and boredom of prison life. Killing time is a primary objective. I made it a point to be placed in isolation most of the time, which gave me the solitude necessary to harden my heart. I was younger than the grown convicts who surrounded me, but what I lacked in maturity, I made up with ferociousness and purpose. Every year, Johnny Cash would give us a concert, a refreshing break from the monotony of prison life. Johnny played Folsom Prison Blues too many years in a row for Acha's liking. Already in a bad mood that day, he threw a spoon at Johnny, hitting him on the forehead. Johnny Cash never missed a beat and finished his set hardening my hands and perfecting my strikes. I began making a name for myself, taking the lives of two NF members, 
Cisco from Fresno and Paul from Stockton, as well as Arthur and Cyribo from the Black Gorilla family. Bull just came in from Bolson. Canales are all good with you being made. If you say no, we're all good. Life goes on. If you say yes, there's no turning back. You're an immigrant brother, Canal for life. Amen, that's it. Por vida. Orale. Say no game. Say no club or biker game. You feel me, Holmes? I understand, Canal. Mundo. From this day forward, consider yourself a Hemet brother. Cannot. Gracias. Riley. Watch out for Sergeant Hankins. Always watching out for body language. Go meet your canales. Gracias. Riley. Big Mike gave me the news I had been dreaming of for so many years. I only met the Lato once. He was in a transport layover on the way to Chino. But it was enough time to understand why Cheyenne commanded so much respect. What a little shy. Did you fly in the coop on the CC? See you soon. Well, I'm up for parole this year. I should be coming home soon. No, that's really great news. How's mom? I mean, how do you think she is? You know, I'm gonna need you to make me a promise, okay? What's that, sis? Anything? I need you to promise me that when you get out this time... I promise. You're gonna stay out for good. Yes. I know you don't see it, but you're breaking her heart. It's gotta stop, okay? Mm-hmm. I know. Well, you make sure you tell mom. I'm coming home for Christmas. You let her know that, okay? Yeah, I'll let her know. I'll let her know. Sorry to cut it short, but uh, my time's up. I gotta go. I love you, Rudy. You love you too, sis. I'm gonna see you real soon, okay? Okay, keep in touch. You take care of yourself in that. I will. Mendoza, you've been selected to be enrolled in the Lister program. It's a surgery to remove the front part of the brain that controls the violence. It's a government-funded program. Now why would I give you the best part of me? Because you're the perfect candidate. By the way, we're going to ship you out tomorrow. Make the best of it. Counselor. I'll see you soon. Wish you the best, ma'am. It's the good work or not? Welcome to the Frankenstein Factory, I say. Mr. Mendoza, have a seat, please. They tell me you're a chess player. Is there anything you don't know about us? I appreciate you volunteering for my program. 
volunteering. Is that what you call it? If I remember, I didn't have a choice. Nevertheless, the Lister program will benefit you. Mundo, don't you want to live a normal life? You think sitting here, playing chess, trying to get in my head, in your little comfy chair, is that normal? Normal Mr. Mendoza would be not killing people. High level prison officials have just confirmed termination of the controversial Lister program. You may recall that partial lobotomies were to be performed on most violent inmates in the prison system. Although officials insist participation is completely voluntary, protests and legal action have led to permanent shutdown of this medical procedure. Rachel Roberts reporting. Back to you, John. Mundo, congratulations on keeping your brain. I only need half of it anyways, I said, to do with the knuckleheads in here. You hear what happened today? You already know we started hitting the NF a few months ago. Sleepy and Pelon killed two at Susanville, and Cato and Barry Mills from the AB hit some in Tracy. Baby boy killed another one in Tracy Tamien. They're going down like flies in all the pintas. That's the good news, carnal. The bad news is Cheyenne got hit in Chino. What? No, carnal, he's dead. They shanked him like 70 times and then threw him off the tier at Palm Hall. Woodsy from the NF has been disrespecting Cheyenne, mocking his memory like a schoolboy on a playground. I listen. I heard a lot about you, I said. Hardly a moment, but not on me too, Katna. For the last words about you as a kid, man. They're all true, I said. Wow, except me. You're right, I said. It's good, it's good. Vivi por vida. Por vida. Welcome, Karna. Sailor was also from Vienna, one of my own. We will become close friends. Mail call. Last day in isolation, and you get mail. Somebody must love you, Mendoza. A lot of people love me, you see. Man, that's good stuff. Can a convict get a whiff of that? If this was another Ruka, this is from me consentida, Michelle. Come on, bro. I might be busted and disgusted, but I can't be trusted. This one is for me, and only me. Simon. How does an inmate suspected of a half a dozen prison murders qualify for a parole date? Well, the law is the law, and if those things can't be proven, you've got to go by the guidelines. Ah, bring them in. According to your file, you were committed out of Los Angeles County on an involuntary manslaughter conviction. You arrested in May in 1969. You served about five years and then about another six months county time. According to new guidelines, you are to be released upon approval of parole plans. 
It should be free or out in about 30 days. Can you handle parole? Yes, I can. Tell me how. I'm a changed individual. Let me guess. You're gonna be telling my sister you'll be on Broadway next week. Am I right? Something like that. I appreciate you allowing me to write your Carnala. I respect her like no one else. The walls have ears, Carnal. We beat the system. Now we got work to do on the outside. And when I get out, I'll let your Carnala know. Now is coming right behind me. Then this. Hold on. Stop teasing me, Esther. Cyclona, hey baby girl, Mundo here. I made it to Broadway. How's Bakersfield? Good, good. Hey, you know a vato from Bakersfield named Woodsy, you know? Yeah. Do me a favor. Put out all your fillers with your people. Do whatever it takes to find this vato. Yeah. And I'll be in touch real soon. Gracias, mia. Mucho amor. Bye. God, Michelle. You look like an angel, Mia. Just like I pictured you. That I was sending you photos of someone else. I see it, Gunnar. 
we don't need to be held down by dead weight. The carnalists who are slamming the prophets into their arms, they need a way, Joe. That's what's been holding you from tapping into Chuy. He's the head of the Alhapo family in Mexico. We burn him, he just stops supplying us. We lose a solid contact. Understand? Okay. Let's agree right now. You, me, and Sailor will connect with our runners. And Sailor and I will drive up north. We have brothers in Frisco and Hayward, and Emmet Carnales in Fresno, Baselia, and Bakersfield. Okay. We'll get a sample from Chewy. All that really needs about an ounce. Me and Sailor will supply the Carnas with the sample and we'll slang it 500 an ounce. And quality never changes without notification. First order will be on consignment. And then they prepaid from then on. You make it work? I mean. We'll make it work, Joe. I also have an idea for our own backyard in LA. Damn. Sailor and I will get a team together and we'll go to everyone slanging in the barrios and we'll read them the Amen Gospel. And what's that? They either push our dope or we take them out right there. Once word gets out, they'll all fall in line once they see the kukui coming. I love it, Garner. Let's start spreading the Emmy gospel. Simon. Simon. <laughs> Open the cash, yes sir. Let's turn it around anything. It's all beans. Tell me, where's the clavo? Tell me! Where is it? Where is it? I don't have anything. I don't have anything. Mundo. Check this out. He held out for this? Pancho Villa. Come for your people. Trading death for a pedazo. Didn't make sense to me. Let's go. Alfie, let's go. I'm tired of driving. I'm about to get all the action. I want to be the pistolero. Sailor. I think he's serious. All right. Next time you pull the trigger. Now move, Menso. That's what I'm talking about. This is a man.
a little taco breath. Open the door. We need to talk to your boss. Should have opened the door. Maybe I should have said uno, dos, tres. Should not. <laughs> streets of anyone that dared to challenge us, defy us, lie to us, or get high on his own supply. Word spread quickly and the neighborhood stepped back in line and accepted their role as soldiers for La M. You know who I am? From now on, you get your dough from me and only me. Good with that. What I need. Hey, that's a bomb now. It was packed too. Barrio White Fence. Circle Blanco. I'm Mundo. And from now on, everybody slanging in this neighborhood is supplied by me. And only me. And then this. Come on. Tell your homeboys that we're in charge. All right. Watch you. What are they? Not a good showing up here, is there? You got a lot of guts inviting me. We can have a problem with the drugs. That's what the big homies want. Yeah. That's what the big homies want. From now on, anybody singing dope, can report to Mundo. Every one of you that are slanging in this barrio, from now on, report to Shiloh. Shiloh reports to me. And then this. Come on. watch you. Be like that. I'll be in touch, yes. Come Are you sure you want to be with me? This business of yours seems to be taking you away from us. Like here? What's in that thing? <laughs> Why don't you just tell me if you don't want to spend any more time with me? It's not like that, Michelle. I love you. <laughs> You're number one in me, Corra. I wish I had a funny way of showing it. What do you want me to say? You want me to say, you know what? Let's just go get married. Is that what you want? <gasps> Why is that supposed to be some kind of proposal?
Hello, everyone. Let me introduce you to Ray, my future son-in-law. How did you like the prayer meeting? Honestly, I had a good time. Everyone seemed real, but I'll never come back. Well, God gives us choices. But since you're my future son-in-law, I have to invite you. With all due respect, Ms. Rodriguez, can we not discuss religion? If that's okay with you. That's okay, but let me tell you one thing. You will never be happy wherever you go and whatever you do. If you read Psalm 139, it'll tell you that we cannot hide from the Lord. You mean like nowhere to run, nowhere to hide? That's right. Is that it? That's it. So I never have to hear about God again from you, right? Not from me. I've set my peace. And I will never bring it up again. Thank you, Miss Rodriguez. Your brother's on the phone. Hello? It's for you. Yeah. The word, Mockingbird. Who found him? Damn. I'll say goodbye and be right over. Lorna, how you doing, Mia? I'm good. This is Sailor. Nice so. to meet you. Marika's inside the kitchen. Marika, we're here to do a job. I can't tell you what, but you don't want to know anyway. It has to do with the people that killed your brother. His soul rest in peace. <laughs> I miss the mundo. But he's been the same as either God. <laughs> I give you my word. Things will get better. He was not only your carnal. Is in the house? No, no. Hey, close the door, yeah? Where's Wolsey? He's not home. That's too bad, Essay. I'm gonna take out on you if I don't find him. Don't move. Don't move. One side. Sit down. Woodsy. How you doing? Where's my brother? You'll be seeing him soon. 
give you my palabra. You know, Woodsy, you got a real big mouth, I say. A real big mouth. You disrespect like him, man. It's a funny vato, man. Real funny vato. Yeah, how about sugar now, homie? I give you my work, you know? You wanna see him? Can we see him? You wanna see him? You don't disrespect like him, man. In this, do you understand, Esse? Yeah, the senses records. Hey, Cyclona. Hey, Cyclona. Cyclona. Why waste all that energy, Mira? Here, there's one bullet left. Do it the right way. We exacted our revenge. Unfortunately, a vigilant neighbor wrote our license plate down and we were arrested on the way back to LA. Occupation? Do whatever you want. Hey, Poopsie, what do you think? <laughs> You're crazy, man. What do you think? Remember, you wrote that. Yeah. I hope you don't mind, but I asked my pastor to come talk to you. Sure, Mom. What's his name? Pastor Sonny. Hey, Mundo. Raymond. My name's Pastor Sonny, and I want to let you know that God has a plan and purpose for your life. And I want to say a little prayer for you. That's all right. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, I lift up brother Raymond to you, God. I pray that you would be with him and you would camp your angels around him, that he will see no harm, God, and that you would be with him in everything and all that he does. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Pastor. You're a good man. And let me talk to my feet up. Gracias, Mom. I love you. I'll be home soon. My Ramon, I understand now that you love your brothers more than me. I can't, I can't live, live like, like this. this. I, I don't deserve, deserve this. this. I thought you could be a good man. Thought you could be a good man. Be a father to our children. Be a leader in the community. But I realize now that you have no knowledge of Jesus. And I must move on. My, mother My mother still, still prays for you. For you. And, and so, so will I. I. Michelle. Michelle.
Hello, how are you doing? I'm doing all right. I've been by your cell several times and you've been asleep and so I didn't want to bother you. Yeah. I can sleep do anything. What's your name? Ramon. I like your name. My name is Nathaniel. Nathaniel Elridge. Would you mind if I prayed with you? Heavenly Father, we come to you in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, I ask right now that you would touch Ramon, protect him, Father, and witness to his heart. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. A struggle between good and evil was taking place. A tug of war I felt but could not see. God was fighting for my soul. Ramon, I've got a surprise for you. I want to introduce you to my brother Wilbur. Wilbur, this is Ramon. Hello, Ramon. How you doing, Wilbur? Good. God bless you. This is a, such a pleasure. I've waited a long time for this. I don't know if I told you, but I'm 81 years old, and my brother Wilbur is 85, and he fought in World War I, and he killed a lot of Germans. Wow. So the pleasure is all mine, Wilbur. World War I, huh? Thank you. But for the grace of God, I came home in one piece. And yes, I did kill many of the enemy soldiers. I understand you've killed a few people yourself. Don't believe it. Let's just say, I have a lot to answer God for. There's only one way. And it's in the book of Acts, chapter 16, 31. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Well, thank you, Wilbur. I appreciate that. Thank you, Nathaniel. I didn't know it then, but God came into my heart that day, and I began to experience an emotion foreign to me, remorse. I felt the pain of my victims and the anguish of their mothers. It continued for several weeks while my body was being purged of evil. I now had God in my heart and was one of his soldiers. I exchanged fame, street honor, and respect for everlasting life. George, how's your case going? They're offering me the second degree. You're gonna take it? I'm not sure yet. Hey Mundo, I know you've been speaking a lot about God lately. I wanted to ask you a question. What makes you think there's a God? What 
what makes me think there's a God. Let me ask you, George. You think you were created by accident? Or by design? I don't think I'm an accident. You're not. Think about it. If the sun were just a little bit further, or the moon a little bit further, we wouldn't even exist. But God, in his divine nature, his divine love, all-knowing, made us perfect. And if you could imagine, George, that there is a God above, that is listening to us right now. No, not if he's God. You know, George, the word of God says in Jeremiah that if you seek me with all your heart, you will find me. That's heavy. God loves you, George. And if you allow him to, he'll change your life just the way he changed mine. Even in this cell, God can touch you. Just allow him to, George. Allow him to. Rachel Roberts reporting from the Kern County Courthouse. Sources have just confirmed alleged Mexican mafia killers Ramon Mendoza and Edward Rodriguez will be set free. According to the Superior Court judge, the accused were denied a speedy trial and there was no other choice to dismiss the case. Both men will be released in the next few days. I'm Rachel Roberts, back to the station. Hello? Maria, it's Ramon. Hi, Mundo. I heard the good news about you and my brother. Yeah. Is Michelle there? I don't know if anyone's told you yet, but Michelle is engaged now. She had to move on, and I hope you understand. All right. Thank you. Somehow I felt relieved. Michelle had the right to pursue a life with someone else, someone who would not burden her with the same heartache and misery attached to me. My name is Gil Avila. This is my partner, Steve Simone. We're DEA agents with the Prison Task Force in Los Angeles, and we understand you want to talk to us. Yeah, I do. You know, we understand that uh, you're going to be getting out in about two weeks. Uh, you beat a rap for murder. So what's in it for you? tired of killing people. And now I want to help put away the men in my world that are doing what I used to do. Including your friends? All of them. All but Sailor. He's my fiance's Garnat. But I'm offering a lot more than that. I'd be willing to work with you undercover against La M. Hey. Yeah, I want to let you know that I'll be headed south of the border mañana. Yeah. I'll be taking Sailor with me. We're going to go visit Alfie. And we're in good standings with the Canales. He would never suspect us. After we beat those murder cases. Yeah. And after we'll be doing a lot of talking. He's got a big walker. Yeah, yeah. 
I'll stay in touch. I'll see you soon. like your boy Alfie. He's turned into a killing machine. You taught him everything you know. Charlie, we taught him. You're the one who brought him into our inner circle. Remember that? Yeah. But you turned him from a driver to a pistolero. Remember that? <laughs> este vato. Pounding like a little chavalito. Refusing to take us away from the crime scene. That's all you, S.A. That's not me. Why do we do what we do? Emmett business, right? Hit them, finish them quickly, and complete the job, right? Ain't that what you always say? That twisted carnal gets his jolly out of killing. He loves to see the look on their faces right before he pulls the trigger. Then he talks about every damn detail while we're eating. It's bad for the digestion. Like I said, he's your carnal, I said, not mine. When they were sitting on the hood of his car, smoking a doobie, I eased my way in, grab my 38. But then I remembered, I remember what he told me when we were in the feds. He said, if you ever see me using again, this is what I can do. Boom! <laughs> so you sent him home? I sent that bottle to Brazil, that's it. <laughs> hey, and that was the first one when we hit Bruno. I need you to sign this voucher for a thousand dollars. You said two grand. I told you if they had as much information or better than yours, you'd have to share it. Come on. Nobody has that type of information. I brought you proof. Is this what I think it is? Sailor gives his regards. He's in U.S. Marshal custody now. No way. Glad to hear that. Happy to hear that. Sailor. <laughs> about helping and get evil people off the streets. But Joe, he's not just my crime partner. He's like a father to me. I don't know if I can do this. I understand. I know that I've came this far. I hope God has mercy on me and him because the judge won't. Thanks for bailing me out, Connor. No problem. Now you're free to circulate without that 007 crap. So, dime, ¿qué pasó? You know who I was, Connor? Somebody tipped them off. Who do you think? Only people knew who I was. In Redondo Beach with my sister, Chewy, and Dennis. You can eliminate my sis, so I don't know. I knew where you were at the Angel. Oh, I don't worry about you, Conrad. 
You're like my son. Hell, I don't know. Maybe my eyes are playing tricks on me. But I could have sworn they knew who I was when they stopped me. Dude who came up on the driver's side, had his piece out, and his hand was shaking like this. Check this out. I had dinner with Helen, the Bales Bonds lady. She got something for us. That's Bob, her husband. She wants him taken out. Kia heroin, 10 G's, his drug contact, and get this, she'll even throw in his single engine plane. Serio? I give new meaning to taking someone for a ride, you know? <laughs> hey, I want to, always wanted to be a pilot, Connor. <laughs> yeah. While well, you're on your way, yes, sir. <laughs> Listen, here's the deal, Connor. You and I gotta stop doing the dirty work. Find some game youngster on the street, someone you like and trust. Get him to do the hit. Okay. Can punch out. I still say we should wait. Catch him alone. Does what those married us say? He has a wife, a familia. He brought this upon himself. Mundo, he's in the process of moving out. We gotta hit him now. If that's what you bought those one. Poncho had a wife and children, and by going to the home, we risked having eyewitnesses that would need to be taken out. We couldn't let that happen. Besides, that is not what the MS stood for. I made up my mind it would have to be my carnales who would meet their maker. Even if it meant the rest of my life in prison, no children would die on my watch.
Andou. Ele tem essa... Nada. Vamos. Shotgun. I rejected essa... Let's go. To fulfill my commitment to God, I turned myself in and commenced the arduous task of testifying in court. Are you concerned? Or have you heard anything about your family being placed on this phantom list? Mendoza. Mr. Mendoza, answer the question. Do you even feel that your family's even in danger? The way I see it, Mr. Counselor, and listen to what I'm telling you. The last time I checked, my trigger finger isn't broken. And we all have family. working with law enforcement and serving God in my feeble attempt to earn his forgiveness. My dearest Ramon, I hope you are still on the path of salvation. My brother Wilbur spoke of you often. Perhaps you two understood each other more than most. Wilbur passed away a couple of days ago on the 4th. The day before he died, he asked me to send you this booklet. With, With love, love and, and admiration. admiration. Nathaniel.